Hey, divers, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips once again. I'm back again here at the Scuba Shack. The great shop, the only shop, the best shop. Been here for a long time in Gravenhurst, Muskoka Lakes, north of Toronto in Ontario, Canada. Fantastic diving, this whole region. And the Scuba Shack's been here for a long time, 35 or 40 years servicing divers. If you get a chance, you're up in the air, you drop into the Scuba Shack. But anyway, uh, I want to talk about something which is very appropriate to diving in the Muskoka Lakes. They're beautiful. They're crystal clear, there's good shipwrecks, caves, cliffs, everything, but they're cold. Yeah, the water's cold. Well, at least it is uh, until the middle of summer, but by the middle of summer, people will swim in it. Some people swim in it. <laughs> uh, no, I have a lot of swimming, a lot of water sports up here, but for scuba divers, we go down, uh, the water gets pretty cold pretty quickly. So this is pretty appropriate, and it also is going to answer some of your comments, because some of you guys have been asking about, why does my regulator freeze? The water's 40 degrees. Why is my regulator freezing? I try everything, my reg still freezes. That, you know, which reg is best to keep it from freezing? And, uh, it's a, and I love the comments, keep them coming, but there's lots of them. So I'm gonna to try to, and maybe in a couple of little of these tech tips, I'm gonna share with you some, some, uh, some information about regulators freezing, okay? And, uh, and some of it may be applicable to you, but at least you'll learn a little bit. So first of all, First of all, I'm going to ask you all to remember a word. I have written a word up here, and it's, it's going to be a tough word for some of you guys because it's got nine letters in it. Nine, one, two, three, four, five, nine letters. <laughs> I know that. So you guys that are really big on four-letter words, <laughs> you may have a problem. But I want you to know this word because, first of all, it's a great word if you're at the dive club and everybody else is sitting around talking about fins and mass and snorkels. And you can spike up and say, well, what about the adibiotic effect? And the room goes quiet. And then they say, well, what's that? Then you can expound on it because you watched my tech tips. <laughs> Adiabatic. There it is. Adiabatic. Right there. Adiabatic. Adiabatic. Try it. Adiabatic. Don't forget it. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. This is why your reg freezes, by the way. Yeah, it's just, if this word didn't exist, your reg wouldn't freeze. No, it's silly, of course. Let's come back to that in just a minute. First of all, I need to explain why a regulator freezes. And the first thing I need to tell you is that a regulator doesn't freeze. It doesn't. A regulator is made of brass, stainless steel, plastic. Those things don't freeze. They're already frozen. They're already solids. They can't freeze. It's the water in the air that you're breathing that freezes. So, number one, if you don't want your regulator to freeze, Make sure that the air is completely dry. There's no water in it. Not possible. There's always water in some air. The best dive stores, there's always some water. You cannot get rid of it all. Nobody can. But you can reduce it a great deal. And I think if you look at one of my tech tips a while ago, we talked about air fill stations and how an air fill station, a good one, will reduce the amount of water in the air. The moisture, the, the water vapor. It's actually vapor, water, you know water. <laughs> That's water liquid, but there's also water vapor, water gas is in the air that you're breathing. If you get all of that out, then your reg won't freeze, because there's nothing to freeze. No water, no freeze. So why do they freeze? Well, sometimes dive stores have water in the, in the, in the air, and that's not good. If you take a, take a look at that tech tip a little while ago, Kevin, you can maybe put a, a, a thing on for that, um, a, a link to it, and you will read a bit about that about the water in the rest. So, number one, no water, no freeze. Unfortunately, you can't do that. So, what's the other reason? What makes the water in the air freeze? I kept the reg warm, Alec, just the way you told me. I kept the tank in my car on my way to the ice dive or up to the cold water dive. I kept the tank in the car where it's warm. So, the air and the tank and the regulator are all warm. And I was really, really good. I didn't breathe through the regulator before I jumped in the water out in the cold, cold air. I didn't do that. I didn't breathe in it. I did everything you told me, Alec, and it still froze. What's with that? And the temperature was 40 degrees or whatever. It still froze. Well, adiabatic. What does it mean? Adiabatic is very simply the temperature drop as a result of pressure drop. That's right. It's very simple. It's one of the laws of thermodynamics. Uh, another big word. Don't, don't worry about that one. And there are lots of them. Oh, boy. Um, but it's one of the laws of thermodynamics. And if there is a reduction in pressure, gas, we'll talk about air. If there's a reduction in air pressure, there is a reduction in temperature at the same time. Yep, I can prove it. You all have a refrigerator at home. You all drink Coors Light, right? The most popular drink in the world. <laughs> I don't know how popular drink, certainly the most popular beer in the world, good stuff. 
and you keep it cold, right? Because Coors Light needs to be cold. You saw the, the mountains on the can with the snow on top? Yeah. You keep it in the refrigerator, don't you? The fridge. The fridge. Kevin says you guys wouldn't know what the word fridge means. Of course you do. Fridge is that thing in the corner, that white thing. Usually it keeps it cold. Anyway, how does the refrigerator work? So what I did was, it's the same as your regulator. It's exactly the same as a scuba regulator. Yeah. Next time you go buy your refrigerator, give a little pat. Thank you. That's your scuba regulator. Watch. Take a look at this simple little diagram. Let me get a pointer here, Kevin. What will I choose? I'll choose this screwdriver. Watch. Here's a picture of a refrigerator. Fridge. There's a fridge. Now, whether you know it or not, the academic, let me explain what's inside your refrigerator. Here we go. First of all, down at the bottom, there's a compressor, a little small compressor. It's not very big. Oh, about the size of a football. Okay, they're getting smaller and smaller all the time. But there's actually a compressor down in there. That's that hum. You know, you're going by the refrigerator and all of a sudden, the, the fridge starts to hum. That's the compressor running. It's nice and quiet. It's not like the scuba store compressor. It noises the devil. Nice and quiet. There's a compressor down there. And that compressor has gas. It's actually a liquid or gas, but it's academic. It has gas in there, and it compresses the gas. Okay? And the gas comes out of there. That's this red stuff. The gas comes out under pressure. We're going to call it high pressure. Whether or not it's high pressure, or low, intermediate, doesn't matter. The actual pressure doesn't matter. It comes out as high pressure because it's just being compressed. Okay, does this sound familiar? Eh, it's just like a scuba store. You go to a scuba store, they have a compressor and they take air and they compress it. And the air comes out of the compressor at high pressure. So the, the air comes out of the refrigerator compressor, compressor at high pressure. It's in red. Now the first thing it does is they put it through these Vents. See if it says vent fins there, Kevin. And they do that to cool it. They want to cool it off a little bit. They don't want it to be hot when it gets up to the freezer compartment. They want it to be cooled off as much as possible. So they put it through some vents. It's like a little radiator on the back of your radiator, depending on where you live. Radiator, anyway, on the back of the fridge. Now, I can prove that too. Next time you go past your refrigerator, if the compressor is humming, hmm, reach behind. Be careful, but reach behind. It's not hot, but you'll feel it's quite warm behind, because when you reach around behind, you can actually put your fingers on that little radiator, and it's quite warm, because it's taking the heat from that high-pressure line, okay? And it's delivering that high pressure up to this thing right here. You see what they, can you see that, Kevin? It says expansion device. Expansion device. What the heck is that? Change that. Call that regulator. That's what it is. What is this expansion device is simply a tiny hole. So the high pressure air comes up with that tiny hole and it has to rush through the hole. And as it rushes through the hole, it drops in pressure. Just like the first stage on your regulator. High pressure air and then it drops in from the tank. Sorry, high pressure from the tank comes into the first stage and it drops from 3,000 to 150. That's what it does. High pressure red drops to low pressure blue. Just that simple. Okay. What happens next? Well, that blue meaning cold. I just thought of that, Kevin. That blue line goes through the freezer compartment. Here's your freezer compartment up top, like that. And it's cold because add to be adding pressure drop right there in that expansion device, first stage regulator, right? The pressure dropped from high pressure to low pressure. And when a gas under pressure drops in pressure, it gets cold. It's that simple. So now, this warm, high-pressure gas in red goes through the regulator, drops in pressure, and gets cold. And they pipe it through the freezer compartment, and you get ice cubes for your rum and coke. And it travels, that cold air goes through the whole fridge and cools off your Coors Light. And the gas goes all through there, and then it goes back down to the compressor, gets recompressed, and goes back. It's a refrigerator. It's just simple. This is exactly how a refrigerator works. Exactly. Take another look. Just that simple. Compressed. Hot, they cool it, put it through a regulator, pressure drops so you can breathe it, right? Same thing. Cools, back down. Just that easy. Now, the only difference between this system and your regulator system is that all this part here, this bottom part, the compressor and the red hot gas, is in the dive store, right? They fill your tank in the dive store. And you know that when you fill your tank, it gets hot. We've talked about this in Tech Tips as well. It gets hot, right? So that's that whole part. Now, all this red part from there down is in the dive store. So you get to the dive site, okay? Your tank is cooled off now. 
So the air that went in there was a little bit warm from the compression. It's already cooled off a little bit. Okay? Now you put your regulator on it, expansion device, and you take a breath, and the, t and the pressure goes from 3,000 down to 150, and adiabatic takes over, and the temperature drops again. Exactly right. So you, as a diver, you just have this part. You have the bad part. Pressure drop, temperature drop. Now you understand why your regulator freezes. And this, you know, your refrigerator works perfectly, even if the temperature is 70, 80, 90 degrees. All because of the adiabatic pressure drop and subsequent temperature drop as a result of this reducing valve or regulator. See? So it's got nothing to do with the outside temperature, nothing to do with the water temperature. It only has to do with the pressure drop. It's just that simple. I hope that's clear. Now, one more thing I want to clarify. Because this is very, very common. People say, ah, my second stage froze. Blowing air all over the place, because that's what happens when the regulator freezes. Second stage free flows, you get air all over the place. The first stage, and the first stage, part that goes on the tank, right? Pressure comes in the first stage, shall we say, at 3,000 PSI, and it drops to 150. From 3,000 down to 150. And there is a resulting temperature drop. In the second stage, the second stage, the one in your mouth, okay, the air coming to the regulator part in your mouth is already at 150, right? And it drops to zero. Now, don't mess with me here. It doesn't drop to zero, no. But it drops to ambient. When you suck on it, the, temp the pressure drops a little bit. And so there's your second pressure drop. First stage, first pressure drop, 3,000 to 150. Second stage, second pressure drop, 150 to zero. So in your regulator, you actually have two of these expansion devices, if you like. Two opportunities for the gas pressure to decrease and the temperature to decrease. However, look at these two. In which of these two stages do you think the greatest temperature drop will be? Pretty obvious. The greatest temperature drop is right here. This is going from 3,000 all the way down to 150. The second stage, the temperature, the pressure drop, and subsequent temperature drop is much, much less. So I got news for you. Your second stage doesn't freeze. Well, that's not exactly true, it can freeze. But it's not because of your second stage that the regulator freezes. It's the first stage. In the first stage, with that sudden and considerably great pressure and drop and resulting temperature drop, the air in the first stage freezes. The water in the air in the first stage freezes. Let's do that one more time. In the first stage, where the pressure drop is from 3,000 all the way down to 150, and so the subsequent temperature drop is high to low temperature, right? The water in the air that you're breathing freezes. And little ice crystals, they form on that high pressure seat, which is very small, eighth of an inch in diameter. Very, very small. Little ice crystals land on that, and now the valve can close, so the air flows quickly, and as the air flows quickly, guess what? You get a greater pressure drop and a greater temperature drop, and in no time at all, your reg is free-flowing like mad. How do you know there's a problem? Because your second stage free-flows like mad. You can't see your first stage. You can't tell what's wrong with it, but that's where the problem is. Now, I will be honest with you that there is some freezing effect in the second stage, but it results from here. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Now rest your brain for a few minutes. Adbiatic. Adbiatic. Remember that word. Hope you have fun with that. Hope this answers a few questions. Maybe it creates a few questions. Keep those comments coming. I love them. We'll talk more about cold water diving soon. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips at the Scuba Shack in Gravenhurst, Ontario. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.